Hi boys, welcome back to the channel YouTube. I'm Navy Dad, this is Rusted Bolt's Garage, and this damn wire pissed me off. Okay, well, I know this is not another Miata video. We're, we're not there yet. Still got to move my mom. And I got to have my truck be able to do that. Well, like a dumbass, I left the interior light on for two weeks. I haven't driven Old Blue for two weeks, and that killed the five-year-old battery that was five years and two months old. So, yeah, it was totally dead. The Walmart battery from hell. So anyway, got a new battery, and it's still, right before the battery died, it was, didn't seem to be charging really well. And I was a little concerned that, you know, are the fans really taxing this truck? Um, do I have an issue with the alternator? Because the alternator's new. If you follow along on my uh, Instagram channel, you may have seen this. Oh, great. Yeah, that was on Dallas Tollway, too, so that was fun. Anyway. So, I uh, was getting a little concerned that, you know, maybe I overdid it, but it's been almost four months, actually a little over four months since I did the fan upgrade, and that, it's September 14th, so I made it through all the hottest parts of the, of the year, and uh, it was a champ. I mean, that thing gets 195 degrees, and that's it. It will not go above that. So, it's working well. This is the problem, and look, get a little closer here, and you can see this. This little puny ass 8 gauge wire is the wire that goes from the alternator to the battery. This manages the charging system in that little truck. Yeah, a little inadequate. So anyway, I thought maybe, okay, do I have a bad alternator? You know, it's a rebuilt one from Advanced Auto Rileys, and so who knows? Um, crap, I gotta take this, just a minute. Hello? Hey, hang on, I gotta get to my phone. Okay, sorry about that. So anyway, uh, as I was saying, charging system was failing a little bit. I was having a little hard time to start. I thought, well, crap, what's going on? So, pulled the alternator out, tested it, it's fine. Got a brand new battery in it, obviously that's fine. It's like, dang it, really? After all this time, now the fans are starting to tax the system? No, this stupid thing. This is the fusible link, right here that piece of shit uh, in this little tiny freaking wire. In fact, that was actually squeezed into the, uh, the old battery terminal. I thought, well, maybe the battery terminal is the problem. No, it's starting to fail inside there. Although it hasn't melted through, that's where the problem was. There was continuity was kind of weak in here. So, decided to upgrade the cables, which completely solved the problem, and now it's just spectacular. So let me show you what I did in case you need to do this. Uh, obviously, if you're doing this kind of upgrade on trucks, it's probably something you want to do. Um, definitely, if you've got, got a V8 and a little bit bigger, more, more power and that kind of stuff, you want, you want to do this. Uh, so, let's get over to the truck, shall we? Piece of crap. <laughs> okay, so when the alternator failed and I replaced this one, um, oh, and yes, no, that does not hit. And yes, I am going to put a little uh, piece of a strap there to there just to make sure it doesn't hit. But anyway, that is, uh, the OE is a 90 amp alternator in here. There was an optional 100 amp alternator. I think that's if you had power windows or whatever. So I opted for the 100 amp alternator. So, yes, that little puny ass wire used to be right here going right there. So what I've replaced is that is a full size battery cable, basically. So that is a four gauge wire. And, uh, well, you, I didn't put in a fusible link, but what I did do is put in a fuse. So um, basically that's kind of like a stereo fuse. That's a 120 amp uh, fuse right there, and that is where the cable comes in. Then I got this on, um, well, in fact, I'll put the links of where I got this stuff because I got all this, of course, on Amazon. And, and this is a, a pretty good uh, block. It's heavy duty, and, um, and it works real well. So then we've got our battery cable. Coming around here, here, and that is the cable directly going to the starter, of course. So we've got power going here. Then um, 
Now for the ground wire because the ground strap obviously uh, this is the factory one right here. That's the factory ground wire going from the battery to the top of the manifold right right there. Okay, so that, that's actually pretty good. That's pretty heavy duty. But <laughs> sorry, this engine is really hot, but if you see that stupid little rusted strap, that is actually the ground strap for the body. And that is just completely worthless. So what I did um, so went ahead and added cable in the back of the alternator to the frame. So we've got frame grounded there. Okay. Now for body, we've got two different grounds. Um, this right here, which is bolted on onto right there, that that was the support for the dumb uh, resonator thing that was on the uh, air cleaner to kind of muffle the sound. So. That actually bolts in the same place as the battery ground. Okay, and I'll I'll put a diag or a diagram, put it up on Google Docs so you can kind of see what I did. And then um, that wire right there, there was a secondary wire on the OE cable that was about that big that attached to something similar to that on the original OE uh, cable. Well, <laughs> so I put a big one, ass, big ass one here. Um, so this thing is definitely grounded really well and of course now the uh, charging system is uh, charges this battery very well so even with the fans both on it just doesn't even tax it anymore at all so you know maybe you think it's overkill some people are gonna say oh you've changed the ohms and all this shit well it works so who cares uh, if you're doing this upgrade I would recommend doing this um, it pretty much solved uh, all the problems that I was having right off the bat with that puny little wire and um, actually you see the two wires the two blue wires right there those are the connections that manage the fans and uh, also the auxiliary uh, lights and that kind of stuff which come over to that right there which you've already seen the schematic for so anyway uh, I would highly recommend doing this um, if you're doing this upgrade. Okay, so that about wraps it up. Like I said, this was just a quick one. I had to do this repair anyway, and just thought I would you know, follow up since, uh, like I said, it's been four months, and it's been flawless up until this little issue happened, and uh, now it will be flawless again <laughs> as it cools off. But like I said, uh, the fans have worked great. The truck has never gotten hot, you know, partly because of the bigger radiator in there. You know, Again, this is a V6. We'll do our V8 swap next year. Um, you know, I might have to change the fans a little bit, build a fan shroud. In fact, I had planned on building a fan shroud or modifying the V8 fan shroud to give a little more of a vortex going in there from the fans, but I haven't had to. Uh, but again, if you're doing this to a V8, you, you may have to do that. It may not be enough. I don't know. That, I don't know. I've tried to find out what the, uh, uh, what the CFM is on those two fans, and I haven't found anything. This is um, the same set of fans that most you know GM cars from about 2014 maybe 2013 through 2017 uh, Malibu's, Impala's, um, probably the Buick's um, I think they all use that same same type of fans if you see anything in writing somewhere you know that shows what the CFM of, of uh, you know fan 1 and fan 2 is and what the draw is I know it doesn't draw like the Ford Taurus fan does that uh, you know that 3.8 liter uh, Ford Taurus Fan, which is two-speed fan and on high it pulls something like 4500 CFM it's a monster amount of air that it draws through but that fan was designed in the latter part of the 1980s so efficiency probably not as much obviously as modern fan so anyway if you find that at writing somewhere let me know I'll post it and uh, that way everybody else can have that information so that is going into trash I'm drinking some beer It's the 14th of September and it's still freaking 98 degrees in here. <laughs> uh, I'm not complaining. I hate the cold, but I am ready for a cool down a little bit. Instead of sweating like a pig while I'm doing this stuff. So anyway, uh, we'll be back to work on the Miata in October. Thank goodness. Because I need to get back to work on that car. So, Navy Dad, boys, you be safe. 
Y'all take care, but I'm out.